Welcome to the Packet Exchange. I am Ethan Banks, your host. You know what? We're going to be doing something a little different this week. Uh, no news, no AMA. I just want to drill in on the topic of network automation, which I believe is going to be the future of this show and what I want to focus on. A lot of reasons for that. And so let's jump right in to our presentation. Before we can get into network automation, we need to understand what network automation needs. What do I mean by that? Well, network automation needs a lot of things. First thing, it needs a business mindset. That is, network automation is not what you think of as a network engineer. Uh, oh, I'm gonna nerd out and do nerdy things. No, you gotta think about it from the business perspective, first of all. So you might need, for example, buy-in from the business stakeholders. Because what you're doing with network automation means that you're going to be enabling the business to bring a product to market more quickly. Uh, you're going to be less error prone because you're gonna let robots do the work instead of you going into the CLI and fat fingering something and making things go boom. Maybe it's good to let the business know what you're doing. And I don't mean maybe, I mean you probably really need to, definitely should be absolutely getting buy-in from the business. Another thing from a business perspective to consider as you consider network automation is network standardization. So if you're on a network like I've been on so many times where you look at the switch on this particular network and it's configured with, I don't know, whatever strange things, you go to a switch in another part of the network and look at its configuration and it's kind of different even though they both work yeah that's not good for network automation you want when you're doing network automation to have predictable results and for that you need a predictable network that you're starting off with and that means network standardization you need to get your ducks in order as they say and maybe that's one of your first automation projects actually that is you are going to begin in your network automation journey by making sure your network has been standardized and maybe you're going to be using some network automation tooling to get that done a little bit of inception there but i think it's a really big deal when you do that what you end up with is a predictable network and one that is also uh, anti-fragile as i as i like to say less prone to breaking another thing that you're going to need is deep networking knowledge. That is, you have to understand what happens on the network when you turn on a particular protocol or when you plug this link between these two switches together, what, what actually is gonna happen next. If you don't have that knowledge, you're in kind of a bad spot when it comes to network automation. You don't know how the network works, then you don't know how to automate it. Uh, another way to put it, you must know how the network works or you cannot automate it and you can't bring that value to the business and or you're putting the business at risk automating things that you don't clearly understand. So that's the first thing that network automation needs. It needs a business mindset. The next thing that it needs is a well-defined process. And this is what I was alluding to partly in uh, my point on that last slide. You got to have something that you're automating. You know, it's a process. It's a workflow. It's something that you're automating. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to automate the network. What does that mean exactly? Are you going to automate uh, a VLAN creation? Um, if you do, what does that look like? I mean, okay, let's, let's drill into that for a minute. Let's say you decided your automation task is going to be uh, automating the creation of new VLANs. Therefore, you need to know things like an available VLAN number. You need to know your spanning tree configuration. Is it multiple spanning tree or is it a per VLAN spanning tree? Uh, you need to understand where that VLAN needs to go and on which devices and what trunk links need to have that VLAN that you've just created be allowed. Uh, and there's more to it than that, right? What if you're gonna create layer three interfaces for that VLAN so that that VLAN has got a, uh, a first hop uh, routing uh, there? Well, you're gonna do VRRP or HSRP and where are those IP interfaces gonna live and what are those IP addresses gonna be anyway? Oh, did we, do we need DHCP on that VLAN as well? So there's a lot to it and you need to define clearly what it is exactly that you're automating each step along the way and know your process very well. Another thing you need then is network knowledge. And I don't mean how the network works as we were talking about earlier. I mean knowledge about the infrastructure. 
Well, yeah, if I'm going to create a VLAN, what VLAN numbers are available and which ones are already in use and where if you've got a multi-site network like most of you do. Uh, so you need, therefore, a source of truth or maybe sources of truth, you know, places where for certain bits of information you can look at and know definitively this is reality. I have knowledge of the network because this source of truth tells me the things that I need to know before you can move ahead in your network automation process. Another thing that you're going to need here from a process perspective is a backout plan. So a backout plan means the same thing it's always meant when you, if you've worked in an environment where you have to do change controls, you probably had to include a backout plan. How do you get back to where you were if things didn't go well? Well, when you're dealing with infrastructure as code, the idea that you're using code configuration chunks or maybe Ansible playbooks to configure what a network device is meant to look like, then version control is version 10 looked like this and it was known good. We tried to go to version 11 and it did not work. We're going to back out to version 10. How exactly do you do that? That's part of your well-defined processes here. Last thing I'll raise is inclusiveness. And what I mean by inclusiveness is if you're the only engineer who can run the scripts or the playbooks because they all live on your laptop, no, you're, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it really bad. Uh, you don't want that and, and guilty. I've been here, I've done that, where the thing that was the cool tool that helped me get a job done, I kind of made it myself and kept it to myself and I wasn't very good about sharing it with other people because, ah, you know, I can just do it. You don't want to be in that spot. If you are serious about network automation, you want to be inclusive. So that means other people should know what the tool is. That tool is, lives in a centralized place and maybe you've got some kind of RBAC uh, controls around it so that not everybody can run it, obviously, but, uh, but it's there and it's documented and when someone runs it, there's logging that goes on, perhaps, you know, these kind of things. You would want to document that process clearly. You would want to know that um, someone else could step in, look at the tool, the thing, the, the, the whatever it is that you're doing, that you're using to do the automation, and it's easily understood because you've documented it so very well. Uh, it could be that that's a Python script that's got documentation embedded in it. It could be um, a post that you've written explaining the tool and a diagram that accompanies it with the workflow. Uh, that is all needed for inclusiveness. And inclusiveness is very definitely what you want with network automation. You're like, you know, Banks, you're making this harder than it needs to be. Uh, I just kind of do things my own way. Right. Well, when you're getting to network automation and infrastructure as code, another thing here that maybe hasn't happened before is about to happen. Your world is about to collide with everyone else's infrastructure world, whether that's cloud, that could be storage, that could be servers and, and VM provisioning, containers. Your network automation could now be integrated into those other automation tasks that are happening in other parts of your IT organization. And so as you begin building out network automation scripts and tooling, etc., you're building an opportunity to integrate with IT as a whole rather than living in a silo, living on an island, kind of doing things your own way. And that's the way you want to be thinking. Thinking like, okay, if I build this, I want to build it in such a way that I can integrate it with a larger set of processes within my organization over time. So another thing you need here is a toolbox. What do I mean by a, a toolbox? Well, these are the, the things that are going to facilitate network automation for you. So for one thing, maybe you want to think more seriously about an out-of-band network if you haven't before. If you manage devices that are over the horizon, they're out of reach for you, you don't even have remote hands, this becomes super important. As you are doing automation, you now have the ability to make configuration changes at scale, whereas before you'd be going into one device at a time, making a change, and then you know getting away, and kind of keeping your risk pretty well bounded that way to that one device or that one site if you really blow it up. When you're dealing with automation, it depending on a lot of things, but there's an opportunity here for you to fail at scale and really blow up a lot of things in a hurry. And an out-of-band network might be the way you recover. If you haven't thought about an out-of-band network before, maybe you need to be thinking about that. 
Of course, we don't want to fail at scale, and so maybe what we actually want are, uh, are a better set of checks and balances so that we don't have to resort to the out-of-band network if things don't go well. Uh, and by checks and balances, what I'm getting at are things like testing. You updated what the playbook is for this particular device. You updated uh, a script that uh, effectively changes the process uh, for uh, some change that you make routinely on the network. Well, how are you testing that? How are you validating that? Well, there's a lot of ways that you can deal with infrastructure as code and do that sort of validation and testing. Uh, unit testing, you could get involved in, in a pipeline where as you make a change to the code, that code is next subjected to testing that validates that the results you get is what you think you're gonna get, and then that uh, code becomes part of production code that you can run safely at will knowing that it's passed a battery of tests. Uh, I mean, this is tricky with network infrastructure. How do you even know what the tests are that you should run? Some of us have done things over time like, okay, before the change, we had this many OSPF neighbors, and after the change, we still had that many OSPF neighbors. Test passed, you know, things like that. Um, how do you codify that, though, in a network automation setting? So that's, that's another thing that I think is kind of a big deal. Testing, figuring out what the tests are. Um, probably a lab environment, if you've never made the time for a lab environment, it's time to make the time for a lab environment so that even if you can't simulate the entirety of your network, you can, at least in some representative way, validate tests and scripts and playbooks and so on that you might be running. And then the last thing you need uh, in a toolbox are screwdrivers and hammers and wrenches and all the cool things you can find in a toolbox. Uh, and obviously I'm getting at the tools themselves that you will leverage to help you with network automation. So let me list a few here for you. Uh, some are the free ones, the, the open source tools. Uh, Netbox, for example, I've mentioned a source of truth. Very popular to be using Netbox as a source of truth these days. It's got an API, you can interact with it programmatically ask it information, put information into it. Uh, Netbox is a great source of truth for your network. Maybe not the only one you need, but it's, uh, it's got a lot in there. Uh, Python is a scripting language. It's a programming language, right? It's full-blown and it's powerful, but for the most part, it's not compiled. It, it, that is, you don't write code, feed it into a compiler, and that compiler spits out an executable that you can run on a particular platform. Rather, Python is an interpreted language, and you just have a Python interpreter on your Mac or your Linux box or your Windows box, and you can run that script wherever. Python is extremely well supported by the network automation world. Lots of libraries that you can import that give you great capability and power. And it's, if you've never done programming languages before of any kind, it's not a bad place to get started. It's fairly easy to read and lots and lots of community support around it. So it's a good one. Ansible seems to be where most people have landed for a, a, a state sort of tool where you're using a playbook that defines what a device should look like and Ansible runs and looks at the state of that device and looks at the playbook and makes sure that that device matches what's in the playbook, makes the changes that needs to be made, doesn't change anything that doesn't need to be changed, and you know, then you're done. Um, Ansible has kind of won the battle over Chef and Puppet, uh, those are out there. Another one I didn't list here on the slide, but Salt uh, seems to have some traction in the network automation world, but Ansible is where most people seem to be at these days. If you're dealing with cloud, Terraform. You probably want to deal with Terraform. It's a different animal than Ansible, but you could think of them as uh, kind of related. You know, different companies, different, uh, you know, very different tools, but similar in the way that you might use them. And I say not free there at the bottom, even though they're free. Well, what am I getting at? You know, right, it's an open source tool, so it doesn't cost you money, but it's not free in the sense that it will cost you time, it will cost you uh, effort to learn how to use these tools and to build processes around them. Um, nothing is just, I'm gonna pick it up and I'll be incredibly productive with it day one. Now, you're gonna spend a lot of time figuring things out. That's what you're gonna do. Alternative to open source tools then would be commercial tools. And there's lots and lots and lots of them out there in the network automation space. Many of those folks have been sponsors on the Packet Pushers podcast networking. You can probably hear them on Heavy Networking or Day2Cloud, one of those podcasts. 
sometimes a commercial tool is what you need. You don't have the time to spend with the open source tools. The open source tools just don't do what you want. You can't get the support that you're looking for. And the commercial tools uh, will give you all of that. However, they cost dollars. You got to spend money on that. You've got a, a, you know, a budget line item to acquire this tool and probably to maintain a subscription to that tool and support. So there's a CapEx cost, there's an OpEx cost. And not only does it cost you money, but it's not free. Doesn't that mean the same thing? Well, I mean not free in the same way I meant the open source tools are not free. It's going to cost you time and energy and so on. And, and like so many tools many of us have bought, it was some six-figure tool that sits on a shelf because ultimately we as an organization couldn't figure out how to make use of that very expensive tool. We didn't put the time into training or to updating processes or to force everyone in the group to actually use it. And so we bought it. It was going to do all these things and it doesn't do anything. Now, if you've heard all of this and you're like, man, network automation needs too much and I cannot handle this. It is just too much all at once. And no, I am not going to get into network automation because you've scared me to death. Right. Coming up next on the Packet Exchange, <laughs> this is what we're going to be doing here for the next several episodes uh, over this season and probably going forward. Let's automate. Let's, let's work on this together. Uh, I will spend time showing you tools, techniques from a beginner's perspective. It's going to be something that's accessible to everyone. I'm going to assume that as smart as you probably are about networking, you know spanning tree and routing and VLANs and switches and firewalls and so on. Automation is a whole new world. Infrastructure as code is just not easy for you to get your head around. Maybe you don't have a computer science degree. You never went to school for programming. So a lot of what's out there is like, you don't even know where to start. And several of you have told me pretty much that you don't know even where to start, how to get off the ground with all of this. Great, let's do that. Let's work on that together. I don't have all the answers. I am not a network automation professional where I spend all my time here. I do have a programming background. I am familiar with some of these tools. And hey, I got a lab, so we can work on a lot of stuff together. Let's break things. Let's put things uh, together. Let's explain them all from the ground up so you can get a sense of what tools and techniques are out there that you could use in your network. You know, you can think of it as automation for beginners, I guess. In a lot of ways, I'm an automation beginner myself. Um, and so we'll just take our time with it. We'll do a little bit at a time. And, uh, you know, at the end, we'll, we'll get a result. I think we'll get a result. That's the, that's the whole idea of what we're going to do with Packet Exchange uh, going forward. The first three episodes, you know, I thought about it. You know, I was doing news and, and AMAs and, and, and some other bits, and that's fine. But Man, automation's cool. I really wanted to spend a lot of time there, and I can tell from the, the download numbers we get for different podcasts that automation is what a lot of you are interested in as well. So I guess we're on a journey together. I always hate that journey thing, but that's it. We're on a journey together for network automation, and I'm looking forward to you joining me in the next several episodes as we begin to explore the topic of network automation.